Good afternoon, Bison fans, and welcome to our virtual Bucknell men's and women's cross-country season preview. My name is Todd Newcomb, and I'm joined today by Amayesha Kelly, our Senior Associate AD for Development. And we want to take this opportunity to thank, thank Giant for sponsoring this year's season preview series. We've got a great lineup for you today featuring head coach Kevin Donner and four of our current student athletes, Ashley Blair, Ashlyn Ramos, Connor McMenamin, and Evan Miner. Time now to welcome in Coach Kevin Donner, who's in his 20th season at the helm of the men's and women's cross country and track and field programs. He's led the Spike 2 program to 40 Patriot League championship titles, including 10 in cross country, and has been honored as the conference, conference's coach of the year 32 times. Thanks for joining us today, Kevin. Hey, thanks a lot, Todd. Appreciate asking uh, us to come out. So we'd like to set the stage a bit, Kevin, with uh, some questions from Aisha regarding your program's return to competition. All right. <laughs> Coach, welcome. Glad, glad to have you here. Thanks. And, and welcome to our audience. So let's dive right in and just talk about how good it feels for you and your student athletes to be back on campus preparing for a season. Oh, it was awesome. And I, you know, I felt it yesterday. We did a little workout on our cross country course and ended uh, the workout on the outdoor track. We wanted to get used to running on grass again and uh, get a little rhythm work on the outdoor track. So um, it just felt good having it, you know, uh, the majority of my team together. You know, we, we didn't bring everybody back for early arrival, but we, but we brought all what we felt were all the Patriot League uh, candidates. And um, boy, it, it felt good just having a normal practice and uh, you know, I, I think I've seen some of these people more in the last three days and I saw them all last semester. Uh, as you know, we only had about five or six weeks to work with them and I was only practicing two days a week, you know, last semester. So we really only had about 10 or 12 formal practices of kids who were running on their own. So uh, we've already had four, you know, in, in three days. So it's, uh, it was good seeing everybody again. That's great. And so 431 days since you've last competed and actually really welcome hearing you say the fact that it felt normal. So that, that's, that's a good sign, good sign of things to come. As we know, not having the traditional cross country season in the fall and certainly again, that 431 days, even since, since your last competition. Well, all these kids, they, they, they did run indoor track, you know, so. Sure, yeah, sure. So it's actually two, it's actually about almost 300 right around there so still, for cross country you're right it's for, for cross country yep so a let, over 400 yeah let's talk about though the um extensive planning that has had to go into the return and um some of the protocols that the team and, and your staff even have to go through even just to be at this point well yeah um you know all our student athletes left on November the 20th, right before Thanksgiving. And, and even when they left, we were unsure of when we could bring them back because the Patriot League hadn't made any decisions on what's going to happen in cross country, what's going to happen for, for indoor track. So I believe it was right around, um, you know, between Christmas and New Year's where we started to get some feedback about cross country being on and indoor track, uh, not having a league championship. So uh, basically our administration deemed cross country a winter sport and uh, track and field a spring sport because there was no true uh, championship in indoor track and field. So with the March 5th uh, date for the Patriot League championship, you know, that's literally, you know, less than seven weeks from now. So we did feel as though it was important to bring our cross country team back and they had to go through the protocols of uh, two negative tests, uh, self tests, one 11 days out, uh, the other like six days, five or six days out and uh, before they can move on to campus and, and practice a, as a team. So we then went through that and then literally after uh, being here for two days, they all got tested again on Monday and those tests are coming back today. So. Uh, the university is doing all they can to, to make the campus safe so that we can practice. And then um, we have our uh, runners broken up into uh, smaller groups. Uh, so they're not all running as a pack. They're running in smaller groups and just, just to be safe there. But we, we kind of do that anyway. That, that's what we kind of do even 
uh, without the pandemic because we want to match people that are you know similar talent level similar volume similar intensity and then uh you know mask all the time indoors and you know just the normal social distance as much as you can wash your hands as much as you can uh no large gatherings you know we're just you know playing off with all that sure so you mentioned about the date being set for a cross-country championship the conversation and back and forth regarding indoor and i think you know, we'll, we'll kind of get into some of that but can you talk about what you and perhaps even your peers within the Patriot League had as far as in influence on how the cross country championship was going to be done this year with it within the league. Yeah, sure. Our head coaches were meeting. Uh, we've been meeting periodically uh, informally about every other week, sometimes every week to just talk about ideas. You know, what can we present uh, to the our administrators at, at our own institutions who will obviously be in contact with the administrators of the Patriot League. How can we effectively run a safe meet? And, um, you know, for cross country, obviously that's a little bit easier because it's outdoors, uh, you know, but we still wanted to cut the numbers a little bit. It used to be each team was allowed 12, which would potentially put 120 uh, on the line and 120 women on the line. And it was agreed upon that we would use eight. Uh, seven is uh, considered, um, you know, a varsity team anyway. Uh, so having, you know, uh, 80 people or less on the line for each gender uh, felt safe, but it also ensures that everybody has their best team out there. Uh, so that was, and we, and we did want to go uh, March the 5th uh, that way. If there was an indoor season, we could get the majority of it done. Uh, there's a chance that uh, March 5th weather might be better than January 30th weather. You would think it may or may not, you know, that's a hit or a miss. Um, but also that is the last day you can kind of meet and utilize it for a possible at large for the national championship. There is a national championship at Oklahoma State on March 15th. So that gives um, anybody in our league that qualifies, which by the way, the individual winner is gonna get an automatic bid as a individual this year. And uh, I think that's exciting news. And uh, the committee with no regional championship meets, they're basically just gonna pick 31 teams, you know, mm -hmm. and they're gonna look at results. And um, in the last uh, meet you could utilize would be, last day you can utilize will be March the 5th, because uh, March the 6th, I think they're picking uh, the national qualifiers. So that's why we chose, we agreed that March 5th was the best time to do it. And obviously the administrators did, obviously the Patriot League did, and then we're on. Now we're just going to try to run a couple meets. Uh, keyword, try. Uh, you never know with the deep snow. I told on my athletes, hey, I've run cross country meets in the snow before. You know, so that, that's, you know, and it's outdoors. It, it can be done, uh, but we have to make some decisions whether it's safe or not when the time arrives. And we plan to have a, a, a dual meet against Lehigh on March the 3rd, I'm sorry, February 13th. And we plan to go to a meet at Lafayette College the, the following week, which is the host institution uh, for the Patriot League. Uh, we're gonna open up January 30th at Army and right now we're still unsure if we're going to make it a track meet or a cross country meet. Oh, wow. Still some determination on testing and what we have to do and, you know, the other opponents and, you know, things like that. But uh, either way, there's going to either be a cross country meet or an indoor meet at uh, Army on January 30th. And I told the coach, I said, hey, uh, you know, if there's a starting line, a finish line, and you have some people in a uniform, I don't care where we run. I, I, we're excited either way. That is absolutely unique to planning <laughs> efforts, to say the least. So I don't yeah. envy that uh, NCAA selection committee either. But uh, let's transition talking a little bit about student athletes. And, and it, what, what are your thoughts or what have you seen with regard to any mental or physical sacrifices and strain that may have uh, occurred among student athletes on your team over the last 10 months? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll be honest. Our team has really done a fantastic job. Uh, they've been warriors. They, they've been training on their own 
and uh, really going after it. Um, you know, they, they send me their workouts, what they're doing, and they do seem, you know, you need externally motivated people to do that. And uh, the people are internally motivated, you know, they need a coach to, you know, kick them in the butt a little bit. Uh, but the externally motivated people are going to take advantage of, of the time. What I have noticed since there has been some cross country meets, there has been some indoor meets is um, people are running fast right now throughout the country. And I think those long training blocks without racing actually pays off. And, um, and, I, and I can honestly say for the majority of my team, uh, majority of my team on both sides, the genders, they're externally motivated people. Uh, they don't, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, I should say they're internally motivated people. They don't necessarily need me. They're going to get out there and run. They're going to get out there and train. And, uh, and they're doing a very good job. And I already noticed it this week at practice. We did a little workout yesterday and the athletes look very good, especially since I haven't seen them since, uh, you know, early November, basically. Uh, before our first shutdown. So, um, you know, hey, I'm, we're excited. We're, we're excited. Uh, I talk with the kids individually and they're like me. They're like, hey, uh, you know, I don't care if it's an indoor meet. I don't care if it's a cross country meet. I don't care if it's a track meet. I don't care if it's on the top of the bank at West Point. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's, I want to race, you know, I want to get out there and race against someone other than a teammate, you know, so uh, that's where we're at, and that's the mindset that the majority of my team has right now, and I'm very excited about it. Kevin, let's talk a little bit more about each of the squads, your men's and women's squad. Now, on your women's side, you return all but one runner from last year's Patriot League Championship lineup. How much of an advantage is that, that you have so much experience back this year on the women's side? Yeah, we do return the majority of our team. And I can honestly say that since that day, which was a year and a quarter ago, um, a lot of other girls have come out of the woodwork too. Um, I, I, we returned four all league runners and we barely lost that meet to Boston U uh, last year. And, you know, they were the, the favorite team uh, to win. And we, you know, we gave them everything we could, but we were kind of one person short. Well, we, we found that those people uh, they're back, you know, they've worked hard since, you know, with the indoor season last year and then training on their own since March. Uh, we're a much deeper team right now. And uh, we also have some good freshmen. Everybody's returning. Our women's team is healthy and we're very, very excited. So we do think we're going to be uh, contending for a, a Patriot League championship. Uh, Boston U, who won last year, they returned the majority of their people. Uh, I think they're, you know, I'm not sure who's red, red shirting, who's back. I, I'm lost with that, you know, and we haven't seen anybody compete yet. So we don't know the fifth years and we don't know who they brought in, and, but we're, we're expecting them to be good considering the fact in the last seven years, either Boston or Bucknell has won uh, the championship. So uh, Army, Navy, we were able to scout both of those schools because they did compete. Uh, last uh, fall and they competed against each other and they competed against some ACC schools that, you know, their season was on. And I think they each ran, you know, two or three meets, uh, including the star meet, which, um, you know, I believe, uh, I believe army won that, but it was real close, but both those teams look very good. Uh, the Patriot league on the woman's side is, is very good right now. So uh, we think Boston, uh, Army, Navy, and ourselves are, you know, going to be contending for a championship. But on the men's side, the men's program continues to improve every year. And last year, just nine points out of a third place slot. What do you think the guys took from that experience that they can bring forward to this year on the men's side? Well, last year, that was a little bittersweet because, um, Yes, we were very close to third place, but I felt as though we had a few people underperform at that meet last year. Uh, we should have been third, closer to second. And, you know, we had two people right up front with, um, you know, guys that just graduated. Drew Dorflinger was second in that race and Jacob Stupak was ninth. Uh, so on paper, you could say, well, geez, you know, we were fifth place and our top two guys are graduated, you know, 
on paper, we might not be looking very good, but I'll tell you what, paper doesn't run. And uh, our guys did an outstanding job during the indoor season. They did an outstanding job uh, training on their own all, all spring, all summer. They looked very good this fall when we did have them. You know, we had an inner squad meet. We had a time trial and they ran pretty fast. We're, and I do think this team is better than last year's team, even though we graduated our one and two guys. And uh, we're just excited to see what we can do. Once again, there's nothing to scout. I, I, you know, Army, Navy, we were able to scout because they had some competition and those two have traditionally been uh, two of the best teams in, in the league. We know that, that, that hasn't changed. We expect that to happen this year. Uh, Boston was second, you know, uh, they were second two years ago, third last year, and they returned a good portion of their guys. So that, you know, they're, uh, they're gonna be good. Lehigh is going to be very good. I believe they beat us by a few points last year. We beat them at the regional pretty good, but I think they returned most of their guys and we're going to run a meet with them, you know, in, uh, you know, three weeks. So uh, that'll be excited. That'll tell us a lot about, about Lehigh. So I look at those five, four schools plus ourselves as uh, being in, in the hunt uh, for a championship. Here's a viewer question for you. It's from Bill in Lewisburg. And his question is, will there be a scheduling conflict between the cross country, the cross country conference meet championship and the indoor conference meet? And how are you dealing with that? And I know you spoke a little bit about that before. Yeah, well, we then there's no true conference meet indoors. Uh, we did set up like a regional, you know, dual meets, tri meets. Uh, and um, our pod is going to consist of Colgate and Lafayette and ourselves for a triangular meet indoors uh, the last week of February. So that's the week before the cross country championship. And um, so that's not going to interfere at all. And I'm going to pick and choose who I utilize in that pod meet uh, from the cross country team. There might be a couple guys that, you know, or, or ladies that could potentially run that meet as kind of a tune-up uh, for the league meet and others will probably train through the meet. So I'll just, when we get to that point, we'll just uh, pick and choose who we're gonna run in that Patriot League pod meet. Uh, keep in mind, that's not a true championship meet. It's just an opportunity for Patriot League schools to compete indoors and keeping the numbers down uh, where you can have two or three teams at an indoor facility instead of 10, uh, which makes it safe and puts the, the chances of anybody catching COVID is much, much lower in a dual meet or a, a triangular meet. So it's on separate weekends. So we don't see that as a, an issue at all. Matter of fact, I'm excited about setting up training plans uh, for people who might potentially do both. Uh, as a coach, I'm kind of in uncharted territory as far as uh, setting up training plans, we also got to keep in mind there is an outdoor season. So, you know, we have to decide, do we want to peak for March 5th or do we want to uh, just be rested so we can do that championship meet and then get ready for an outdoor season or a combination of both. But uh, I've been coaching for a long time now, uh, 36 years, and I have some really good ideas that I, I want to do. do that I think we'll have our kids prepared for cross country and outdoor track. And, and it might even include an indoor meet or two, you know, which we're, we plan on having a couple indoor dual meets that some of my cross country kids may or may not run depending on the individual. Kevin, it sounds as if you almost anticipated my next question, which is also a viewer question. And this one is from Brian in Rio Rancho, New Mexico. <laughs> I think I know who that is. I think you do. <laughs> and his question is, how have the changes to training plans, mileage, and workouts this fall and winter affected your approach to this season and training going forward? Yeah, we, you know, to be honest, I did anticipate a March the 5th cross-country championship back in October. We were anticipating that. Uh, when the NCAA basically said they're going to go with March 15th and we had some meetings with uh, other coaches, we decided, hey, if the Patriot League approves a championship, let's do it on March 5th. So I set up our fall and winter for March 5th. 
And um, so what we did is we, we tried to keep things normal back in the fall with, uh, we simulated a cross country season with an inner squad meet and a couple time trials. But uh, what I did is what I would normally do is uh, I would keep them training through the end, basically the third week of November. And then we would shut them down. We call it downtime where they rest their legs up mental, you know, uh, physically, they rest their minds up mentally. And our downtime is about two weeks. So uh, right around early to mid December, we start getting ready for the indoor and the outdoor season. Uh, and I always peak my kids for outdoor track and field. I, I don't peak them for indoor. So this year I thought, well, geez, there's going to be a March 5th um, championship meet. And so what I did is we shut our, uh, our distance kids down uh, end of October. It was like, um, you know, we were going to run our last meet, our last time trial, October 31st. It got delayed a couple of days. So I think we ran November 3rd uh, because of, uh, you know, some athletic department shutdowns. And I, I, we didn't, I just shut them down. So we, they rested up uh, the first two weeks in November. And then we started to transition back the end of November, early December. And um, by mid-December to January, our kids were training at a little higher level than they were in previous years. Uh, so, you know, like, like right now, we're, we're seven weeks, six and a half weeks out from the Patriot League Cross Country Championships. And I think we're at a point where if this meet was in the fall, we'd be in September, you know, we, we'd be in September. So, uh, yeah, we have worked them a little bit harder, you know, the last um, month or so than we normally would have. So, Kevin, our final question for you today is simply what needs to happen for your cross-country programs to have the best possible seasons they can in 2021? Well, uh, health is always the number one thing with distance runners. You know, distance running is a hard, hard sport. And we run hard, we run a lot. And um, the team that stays the healthiest, where the team who uh, get their athletes to the line close to 100% are usually the better teams. And so we got to take care of all the, the little details, the sports medicine, the the post-run stretches, the ankle mobility, the drills, uh, all the stuff, you know, having good shoes, you know, especially with uh, winter running, we're not on grass as often, you know, although it's, we're pretty lucky right now, but, you know, as you know one snowstorm will put us on concrete, you know, all the time. And, uh, and that's not great for you. So I got to make some adjustments if that does happen with, with the training. So I think keeping the kids healthy is uh, mo most important thing. Obviously, COVID, you know, is something that uh, is out there and, you know, contact tracing and things like that could put some people out. So uh, we got to watch ourselves there. Um, and, I, you know, because, you know, the best team might not necessarily win the championship. It's the team that can have their best runners on the line at the same time is uh, what's going to happen. And, We've already seen it, you know, you've seen basketball games uh, cancel football teams going in shorthanded on TV, you know, and not having their best players out there or not playing at all. You know, so we, that stuff might happen, you know, that stuff might happen to uh, other teams, it might happen to us, who knows, you know, so we just got to do the best we can. Back in the fall, we knew we weren't competing. Uh, so if somebody was contact traced, uh, it wasn't a big deal, uh, but now obviously it is. So. Well, Kevin, we certainly wish you and your teams the best of luck. We hope they all do stay healthy, obviously, and good luck in 2021 cross country season. Hey, thank you very much. Thanks for being here today. So time now to welcome our four student athletes to the show. Our first guest is senior Ashley Blair, who's from in Sealands Grove, Pennsylvania. Thanks for joining us, Ashley. Thank you for having me. Ashley, welcome. So we're gonna dive right into your career here a little bit. You have really improved over the last three seasons, including the last two being first team conference honors. And um, so not only have you had this individual improvement, but there's also, you've been a part of two championship teams. And so talk about what that experience has meant to you and then expectations you have of yourself as you enter into your senior year. 
Yeah, so coming into college, I did not come from um, a program that had won many championships. I personally hadn't won a lot, um, you know, coming from Seals Grove, just cross country is not, not very competitive there. So um, coming here and coming to a team where running is like almost the first priority um, was very cool to see because I love running and just being on a team that loves running as much as I do was probably the coolest thing. And part of the reasons why I picked Bucknell in the first place, you know, not everybody is, is as like committed to the sport as this team is. So, um, you know, winning championships is, you know, a big legacy here and there's a lot of pressure to be honest. So coming onto this team, I was a little, a little terrified, <laughs> but you know, I just had very good, um, influences coming in freshman and sophomore year. And I think that's what really helped. I mean, um, you know, Lauren Grombeck, Colleen Buckley, Chrissy Benzinski, like I had those people to look up to. And, you know, those were the people that motivated me and, you know, drove me to get better, not only as a person, but as a leader and part of this team. And I think they also, you know, they carried the, the team to championships and just, you know, good morale and things like that. So, um, so now being a senior, I want to be that person, you know, I want to be that Chrissy Benzinski, I want to be that Colleen Buckley, I want to be that person that not only helps the team athletically, but just, you know, morally and, you know, to motivate people. And, you know, I hope I can just carry that team to, you know, create legacies that those people had before. Wow, Ashley, I cannot believe you're a senior already. Time does fly, there's no question. Uh, my first question for you actually is from one of our viewers. It's from Lauren in Miles City, Montana. And she wants to know, what's your favorite ongoing new team tradition oh new team tradition i think when we well okay this is like a covid thing but um when we would do like you know breakfasts and lunches together like over zoom i don't know i just think that's really fun you know when we all got sent home in the spring and then you know over break and stuff like that i just like you know still having team meals together so it's kind of like you know, we've like adapted. We would always like calf sit when we were, um, you know, actually able to sit in the cafeteria for like eight hours at a time. But um, we like adapted into like a new tradition of doing like happy hours and like things like that over Zoom. And I just think that's great. Like, you know, still being able to see each other's faces and things like that, even though we can't do exactly what the old traditions were. Um, so just things like that. <laughs> if you could do an old tradition, which one of those is your favorite? I think calf sitting where we would, <laughs> we'd, we all go to dinner together. You know, even if you weren't really on the meal plan, you all just like managed to get into the calf at, you know, 5 PM and you stay there until nine or 10 o'clock and we all just sit and chat. And what do you chat about? You don't really remember by the end. Cause you just talked about so many things, you know? So I think that's probably my favorite thing is just sitting and having those conversations with people and really learning about your team, you know, all together, which is really cool. In, in your earlier comments, it's almost like you were doing a perfect setup for this next question as you mentioned the individuals, the leadership, the legends that you had the opportunity to be an underclassman under. And so now that's you, that you represent that for, for the underclassmen. And so what are the things, just illuminate a little bit more knowing what you aspire to do and offer them, what are the things that you're doing to help them manage Granted, it's your first time as well competing through a pandemic, but how are you helping your, your teammates manage mentally and physically through, during this time? I think a big thing um, that people struggle with, and even personally, is just uncertainty right now. Um, you don't know if, you know, the meet you have scheduled next week is even going to go on. So I think embracing that and just finding the positives from uncertainty, you know, there are times where we may have a cross country race scheduled and say, for example, it snows, so you have to go onto the track or you have to go inside, like embrace that. Like, don't be like, oh crap, you know, we're on the track, like embrace that. Be like, okay, it's another track race under my belt, you know? So I, it's very hard. Like, you don't know if you're going to get sick next week. You don't know if you, you know, get um, contacted through contact tracing and you have to go into quarantine, you know, there's just a million different things that we don't know. But the one thing we do know is that we can run right now and we can train hard and we can do our best to get through that. And I just think it's beneficial to just embrace the uncertainty, you know, and we're very lucky, you know, being at Bucknell and having, you know, the resources that we do, we're very lucky that we're here in the first place. So we just need to take advantage of that as well, because not all schools are like that, you know, not all schools have, you know, their group training right now. And that's hard. That's hard as a runner, you know, it's a very individual sport, but we're one big team, you know, so. 
I love that. Well, embrace the opportunity that's in front of you, and we look forward to cheering you on this season. So thanks so much for joining us, Ashley. Thank you. All right. Our next student athlete, junior Ashlyn Ramos, who hails from the great state of Washington. Welcome, Ashlyn, and thanks for being here with us today. Hi. So, Ashlyn, you made tremendous strides from year one to year two in the program, earning all Patriot League honors with a sixth place finish at the championship. So what or who do you credit for such an improvement and what are your expectations for yourself and your team this season? Um, yeah, I think that I had a little bit of an unconventional um, change from my freshman to my sophomore year, but I think that something that really stood out to me is even though I was like not running very well my freshman year, I was really struggling, um, barely even running actually at a lot of points. Um, everyone, like even like the very top girls on the team, like the seniors still like kind of in, like reinforced me that I was really valuable to the team the whole time. And like, it, I never felt like I was less than anyone. I always felt very included, um, very celebrated and very much a part of the team. And so, I think that that was really cool and very special about our team. And I mean, I didn't really change a whole lot from my freshman to sophomore year. I think that just being able to get in like consistent training, I was hurt a lot freshman year. Um, so I think that that was really important to me. I've got a question from one of our viewers for you. And this one comes from Marcella in Oakland, Maine. How are you going to juggle cross country and track and field participation and training this year? Or are you going to be singularly focused on one sport or the other? Um, yeah, I think that it's something that Coach Donner and I will kind of be working through and like taking it as we go and kind of figuring out like what the schedule is even going to be. Um, I think that it would be really cool to focus on the cross country championships because as Coach Donner said, like individual winner of that gets to go to nationals. Um, which is definitely a little unconventional, but I think that it would be kind of a cool goal to have. And um, as of right now, I would say that's probably what I'm focusing on. But then it's kind of also important to keep in mind that like we have hopefully like a whole outdoor track season after that. Um, so that's also kind of a long-term goal, especially because we missed that last year. So Ashlyn, we just spoke with Ashley a little bit about, uh, she was mentioning that things that she's been able to take from the great runners that have been in the program before her. From, from your standpoint, who are some of the runners on the team either now, currently, or in the past that you've got great respect for and you've looked up to and why? Yeah, I think it's really funny hearing Ashley talk about that because she's kind of like that to me. Um, I mean, she's had so many great races and has proven to be like a very talented runner. She's always been a leader on the team as well. So I would say that Ashley is definitely one of those for me. And then she mentioned Lauren Gronbeck and Colleen Buckley. And I think that the two of them have also, uh, Colleen was here when I was a freshman and then Lauren graduated when I was a sophomore. Um, and I've definitely always looked up to both of them in like kind of different ways, but I would say that the three of them have always had very strong presences on the team. And even Colleen and Lauren, like now that they've both graduated, I think that they're still kind of big parts of my life. And like, we still communicate pretty regularly. Um, and yeah, they're still very like inspirational and supportive. So that's really cool. Well, something tells me that many of the underclassmen certainly look up to you. So mm -hmm. good luck to you with your performance this year and, and, and to your teammates uh, at the Patriot League Championships on March 5th. And thanks again for being here today. Thank you. All right. So our first guest from the men's program today is senior Connor McMenamin from Satterton, Pennsylvania. Welcome, Connor. How are you? Thank you for having me. Connor, as a senior leader on the program, what are some of the lessons that you've learned over over the, the years of being a member of the program? And um, what are your goals for yourself and the team this year? Yeah, um, I guess like one of the biggest ones, and this goes very much into like my life in general, is that things come with not only patience, but also consistency. And I found that over my four years, there's obviously been a lot of highs, but there's also just been as much as equal lows. And that has to do a lot with not only being patient and trusting not only the overall process overall, but being consistent, being able to show up to practice every day and put on the same attitude and same mentality that at one point in time, all this work is going to work out. And I think that 
as a team, we've really come to embrace that, especially since the past year and a quarter where we haven't really had that much of a competition to do outside of just challenging ourselves and challenging each other to not only be better athletes, but also be better people in a time when we all need to come together. And I feel like that transpires more so into our goals going forward, where there's going to be a lot of uncertainty. Like there's a lot of guys right now. And I know for myself that we don't know how good we're going to be going forward. And not only is it exciting, but it's also, it's something that going into the season, we're just, you know, be happy that we're not only are we having a season, but the fact that it's just all that excitement of how much of this consistent patient work have I been building up to? And now I finally get to show it. So I think it's very much making a profound statement to the rest of the Patriot league. And maybe even on a national standpoint that Bucknell, both in terms of our individual goals and team goals, we're here to, to make a reckoning of uh, the league. I love those goals, Connor. I think they're great. And um, my question again is a viewer question. And something tells me you might recognize this name, but it's from Patrick in Telford, Pennsylvania. And his question is, the weather for a March championship meet might be as unpredictable as a typical November run. If you could pick between sunny and warm or cloudy and cold, which weather situation would you prefer and why? Oh, man. I don't know. It's hard to say because I can think of some of the most of my races that I've run really well in and races where I haven't run really well in that sometimes, especially back in high school, I was superstitious and anytime it rained or it'd be overcast, I'd be like, oh, this is going to be a great race. And then there'd be other times where it'd be super hot. And I can remember both in high school and in college where it's so hot that you, you literally walk outside and you already feel like you're swimming. But I definitely feel like in terms of March that if there's no 30 mile an hour wind gust, it's not technically a March cross country weather. So, I mean, you just got to be ready for anything. And I'll be excited just to put on the uniform that has Bucknell across it. You, we had this conversation with Coach Donner a little bit earlier, the men's team just being on that cusp of getting into the top three in the Patriot League. And you yourself just said that you, you, the team wants to have a reckoning, a reckoning within the conference. And so cross country being and track, even being that individual team sport, let's talk about the team side and what strategy do you and your teammates have for success in the Patriot League as a conference team? In terms of the team, I mean, obviously it's been said before and Ashley and both Ashley and I've mentioned it about how it's very individualized and there's a thing about the sport that is so very incremental to the team success. And there's always been a quote from Nick Saban that my dad and I have always talked about how when you're looking at a team, it's the same in football as other sports that you have to focus in some way and be a little selfish on what makes you the best athlete you can be and how you have to, in terms of this team atmosphere, show up and do your part towards that team. And I feel like, especially for us, is that fitness is something that you can't hide away from, and it's very easy to be exposed. And for our team, we have really worked at being honest with ourselves about how fit we can get. And that, in terms of that, that comes from just being able to run together, do countless miles, do countless workouts. And I think all those integral parts together will not only be better for us going into the future, but as a team, we just have to trust that everyone is going to be ready and that we can show up and put ourselves onto the grindstone when we need to in terms of a race. Great. Connor, thank you so much for spending some time. We look forward to the reckoning that you and your teammates put in the Patriot League this year. Thank you. All right, so our final guest this afternoon is senior Evan Miner, who's from Glen Gardner, New Jersey. Welcome, Evan, and th thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me. So, Evan, you've shown consistent improvement every year at the Patriot League Championship. What do you think it will take for you to crack the top echelon this year and potentially earn all league honors? Uh, yeah, so I have talked about this a lot recently, but at least uh, since the original quarantine back in March, going home, 
I wanted to take my running to that next level. Um, I remember last year after like the cross country, the last cross country championship, I was, uh, it was maybe two or three nights after I remember sitting in my bed and I said like, what am I doing with myself? Like you can't keep, uh, like despite the improvements that I was having from every year, it wasn't to the level as where I wanted to be. So I just kept, so I kept saying to myself, like, I can't keep this mindset of, oh, it'll be the next race. Oh, it'll be like next time. Cause at some point, like now looking as like, I'm a senior, there's a time when that doesn't come anymore. So, uh, in March, I wanted to take my running to another level. I upped my mileage pretty considerably, um, and stretch that into the summer, uh, March and April, I was lucky enough to where, uh, I have one of my teammates uh, who lives pretty close to me and some former high school teammates who actually were Bucknell grads here uh, to train with and took that into the summer, uh, took a shot at really immersing myself by moving to Boulder, uh, Colorado for two months to train at altitude. So I wanted to really take that next step with mileage, altitude training and the intensity overall. I've done some workouts and uh, just like stretches of training where if you told me that I was going to do that a couple like last year or two years ago, I probably would have said no way. And now I've done some workouts where now it's changed my perception of what is hard. So. That's thanks for sharing. That was great to hear about the pushing yourself and seems like a common theme with a season, that opportunity in front of you. Uh, my next question is from a viewer. And it's Kevin in Oakland from uh, Oakland, Maine, in relation to the championship. How do you feel your nerves and the weather will affect the race? You haven't run competitively competitively in quite a few months. Uh, for the sake of nerves, uh, I used to get so nervous before racing. Like, I remember sophomore year, I got to a point where in my head, I got kind of frustrated because I would get super anxious. But now it's something to where... I trust what I'm doing so much to where I don't really worry about that anymore. And like, I understand that the work that I'm doing is for the sole goal. And so it's not really anything like outside of it. Like I used to, like when people talk about superstitions and things like that, like, Oh, I have to wear lucky socks or things like the work that you have put in will pay out. And so I think, and also just in general, like we used to almost take racing as a right that we had like, oh, we have to, like, we have this race, like it's a right. Now it's more of a privilege. Like you don't really, nobody can guarantee it to you. Like back in December, there was uh, some races in California for like a lot of higher end runners and pros. And you saw that there where like guys really took advantage of that. And you had guys coming out with Olympic qualifying times, things like that. And like, so for at least my sake, like I see that as like, I'm going to take full advantage of that day and not worry necessarily about it because everybody's going to race under the same conditions. You're going to have everybody from every team on the same starting line on the same course. So it's about where you are between your head. So Evan, one final question for you, and it's a two part question. Uh, first one being you're back on campus with all of your teammates. Uh, what's the morale like right now with the program? And the second part of the question is both you and Connor uh, talked about taking the program to the next level. How are you guys holding each other accountable in your training and everything you're doing to make sure you get to that level? Uh, yeah. So for the sake of morale, I would say it's definitely high because at least like coach Donner had said early on in this call, uh, we haven't really seen each other for two months. So it's kind of nice to be back like even especially back in the fall too like you didn't see anybody in from that stretch from march to august so anytime that you can get back and be with everybody's huge uh because for some people they don't have that opportunity like i i was at least lucky to where i had guys who were close by me some really close friends who could come and help me with training and everything so getting back for like some people is a huge thing because it's a lot different doing mileage and workouts on your own than with other people. So the morale is definitely high. Everybody's excited. So, 
and then keeping each other accountable. Uh, it's, I think that's something that we're pretty good about just in general. Like you, sometimes we joke about this, like we're really close and sometimes that can cause like, you don't want to put somebody else under fire, but sometimes you just got to do it. And so, and I think like what also helps keep people accountable is you see the work that everybody else around you is putting in. So you don't want to be the person who's lagging behind or falling off and not doing what they're supposed to. Because if you see somebody else putting out the work and really trying to reach that next level, I think other people will follow. And everybody else who, like, if you really care about it, like we've been saying, like, if, if you're the one who really wants to take yourself to the next level, like your competitors are also doing the same. So you got to keep up with that because nothing's going to be handed to you. So. Well, we certainly hope you guys stay safe and healthy and we wish you and your teammates the best of luck. And hopefully March 5th will be a nice sunny day and good, a good day for running for you guys, the Patriot League Championships. Thanks again, Evan. Thank you. All right. A special thanks to all of our guests today. We certainly appreciate their time. That's just about going to wrap up today's show. I want to thank Jeffrey Campbell, Cole Clunan, and Jess O'Shaughnessy for their assistance with today's event. Our next event in our season preview series sponsored by Giant will be on Monday, February 8th at noon, and it will feature the men's tennis program. As a reminder, you can get complete schedule for the upcoming shows at our website, bucknellbison.com. Good afternoon, everyone, and have a great day. Go Bison.